Hey and welcome everyone to Monday Money Monk session. So if you're interested in building a business that gives you both profit and free time, you're going to want to watch this Monday Night Live. Now, why do I call it the Money Monk Monday session? Well, I believe when good people master money making, wealth creation, they're able to give everyone a better life. Abundance and prosperity in the hands of good quality people just creates a better world for everyone, for families, for societies. People out there have some very strange beliefs about money and I know because I'm reading everyone's unconscious all the time. There's this anti-wealth sentiment and I have no understanding why. Well, I do, because we're conditioned by society to have this uh, negative viewpoint about wealth creation. I'm just trying to get the lights right here. We're programmed that way. We're programmed to think of rich and wealthy people as immoral. Where in fact, a lot of the rich do so much good with their money. Money itself is not good nor bad, it's just an energy and in the hands of the right people it just supports a better life for everybody. One of the things that I've always loved to do is to take my sons away, me and my um, my family and we all go away and have a trip and as we get older that's even more important because we get to spend time together. That takes money and it takes free time and I'm sure my children appreciate that as well as they get older. But tonight's Money Monk session is all about building a successful business. And the first thing I'm going to say is that most people's benchmark of a successful business is fairly low because we're trained to be resources. We often think that having a lot of money as a result of building a business is a mark of success. But being rich and time poor isn't a great life if you're wealthy and you have free time, then that's a whole other, <laughs> but then you can call that a good life. And you can do what you love with the people that you love. And I often say to business owners when they first start working with me, how, how long can you leave your business and still have it work successfully? And for most people, the, the you know, it's only actually a couple of days, a week at the most. And there's a reason for that, because when people first start in, in business, they, they tend to be experts at something. They're not expert business builders, they're expert at something. If you're an expert at something, the problem is that you're a resource. You're going to be required in the money-making aspects of the business. So for many years, from the age of about 20, uh, I'd build businesses that will, would always give me freedom and free time, meaning the business had to enable me to be able to travel and be away from that business, and that business needed to be able to make money and good money. And I learned at an early age that having that understanding that a business could be built to run separately from you was a real highlight of my early stage education. It didn't come from my formal education, of course. It came from people I met when I first went to Hawaii as a surfer. I met wealthy business people who had an amazing lifestyle because they knew these things that I'm talking about right now. Build assets that run separately from you. So if you can't take, say, two or three months off from your business and still have it run without you, you don't own a business that owns you, in a way. So. I'm in business building mode at the moment and probably will be for quite some time. But what I'll, I'll build will be uh, an asset that runs without me for the most part. So it doesn't require me. Because to me that's a benchmark of success and I often take equity positions in other people's businesses and, and part of that drive is again to support them and to... to um, 
build that business out so it runs without their constant input so they can have a decent life. And interesting enough, a business sells more. And that's the case. Sells them more. So, why should it run without you? Good question. Thank you. First up, because that's what's required to have a decent life. And secondly, it'll run better without you. So we look for operational efficiencies. So if we look at a business and what you need to do to get it to run without you, it needs really good systems. And then the second thing that it needs is people that are are really high performers that can run that system. Two things, systems and really high quality people to run that system. So most people won't take the time out because there's a bit of self-sacrifice in that to build systems out effectively. And the other issue and challenge is most people don't know enough about human psychology to employ the right people. So there's all sorts of challenges and issues there. And we also can see on an unconscious level, most people have a huge work ethic. I remember I used to meet with my uh, business associates that were all fairly free, meaning they had businesses that run without their constant input because they'd built themselves out of being a resource within the business. They'd made themselves redundant from every position in the business that required uh, them to be there, which is a smart thing to do, replacing them themselves with people that were highly qualified and uh, high performers, meaning that they had an internal value system that said that they, I must do well to feel good about myself. That's the kind of staff you want to employ. And our high level programs, that was what we share with our clients and our Ignite programs. We've got recruitment systems that help them uh, with guarantees that, that the poor or, or what we call comfort seeking staff won't be attracted to them, won't be attracted to the ads, that they'll end up just employing high performers with the kind of value systems you want. High performers feel ashamed, to be honest, when they perform at a lower level, which means as a business owner, you don't have to give them a hard time. They've got the similar values to you. That's who you need on your team. So you've got to have systems, build out systems, and have really good team members. But a lot of people on the unconscious level have blocks. So as an example, a block that we'll often see uh, here in Australia, as an example, is so, sort of sense like you should be working all the time and I, sh uh, I shouldn't have the system that runs without me. What are these people going to think of me? You know, this is get in the trenches with your workers type approach. Uh, a lot of women have this thing, the sisterhood. What will they think about me if I'm not working as a business owner? They're worried about what their staff think of them. Uh, there's also a really strong work ethic that came from Christianity, which is, you know, it comes back to the devil... Uh, makes use of um, lazy hands or people that don't have a lot to do. So people think they've got to work all the time. I'd rather build an asset that allows me to be in my purpose. So again, really important thing to start with, the aim of building yourself out of the business. You can do that from the start, great. And then secondly, uh, and listen, if you need this assistant, come work with us. It's one of the things that we specialize in will help you put in systems in your business, but most importantly, then help you bring on really good quality team members to run those systems. And that's what sets up freedom. And what would you be doing then? Well, of course, what you're doing then is you're dealing, you're the conductor of the business, using your strategic thinking, using your entrepreneurial uh, uh, mindset to work out how to create more leverage, scale, and passivity from that business to improve your marketing. So you, it's more about working on the business than in it. Anyway, that's it for today's session. I hope you got a lot from it. See ya.